Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Sudhir Kumar, and today I am going to talk about Bell's palsy. And uh, you all must have heard about this condition, Bell's palsy, which is quite common, and it usually causes paralysis of one side of the face. And uh, so today we are going to talk about the common symptoms, how we can diagnose this condition, and then what are the best treatment options. and then what is the outcome of you know patients with bell's palsy so what are the common symptoms of uh, bell's palsy so as i mentioned that bell's palsy is refers to paralysis of one half the face you know so just to show you this picture so you can see that in this picture the left side of the face is paralyzed and so the so basically it leads to paralysis or weakness of one half the face and sometimes both sides can be weak also and how the patients notice is that you know when they try to <clears throat> close eyes they are not able to close one side one one side eyes so one side eye remains open and you know when they are washing the face normally the eyes will be closed but because the face is weak the eye closure also because weak and on the affected side eye closure may not poss be possible then second thing is deviation of angle of mouth so the you know so you can see that the face is it deviates to one side so it deviates to the normal side so because as we know if both sides muscles are equally strong <clears throat> then the face will not deviate to one side if for example if one side is weak then this side of the face muscles will pull it to the normal side so the face gets pulled to the normal side especially when they try to speak or smile this kind of asymmetry is more obvious and from the weaker side there could be drooling of saliva and also when they try to drink water or juice or eat food sometimes the food and the water can leak out from the affected side Uh, and then when they try to blow out cheeks like this then from the affected side air can leak out and in some cases the taste sensation on the front of the face which is a, which is supplied by the facial nerve can be affected and many people they start with the pain so they typically say that there is pain behind the ear on the affected side and this pain persists even after the paralysis happens now this shows the same things what i mentioned already and also the furrows when you try to look up when the affected person tries to look up and so this furrows on the forehead will not be obvious on the affected side so what causes uh, bell's palsy what is the cause so the exact cause is not known but a lot of research has gone in and it is thought to be a virus infection so you know the the virus most commonly herpes virus has been implicated so it enters and then it has a liking for the facial nerve so so the inflammation caused by the herpes virus and also it could be immune response when when the when our body tries to fight the herpes virus antibodies are produced and these antibodies also can cause inflammation and damage of the facial nerve there are some groups of people who are more prone to get this in that you know people with diabetes high blood pressure and also pregnant women are more prone to get it there is no real difference between the genders so both men and women can be equally affected and the most common age group for this is 15 to 60 years of age 15 years up to 60 years so very you know young kids and more older people may not get it and <clears throat> some conditions like glen barre syndrome and lyme disease can cause facial paralysis on both the sides now once uh, you know so there are two types of facial paralysis one is called central where the disease is in the brain and second is peripheral where the face the nerve supplying the face gets affected so how do we differentiate so central means upper motor neuron uh, type of facial paralysis and peripheral means low motor neuron type of facial paralysis so one is that if the lesion is in the brain the opposite side face is affected and only the lower half gets affected because for the upper half of the face uh, the innervation is from both the sides of the cerebral cortex so unless both sides of brain get damaged one will not get paralysis of both upper and lower half of the face so in a brain lesion suppose there is a lesion in the brain on the you know on this right side my right side then the left side of the face only the lower half will get paralyzed so that is the thing to catch so if you see a patient where only the lower half is weak upper half is normal it could be a brain lesion whereas if both upper and lower halves are affected then it is usually element type of lesion where the nerve is affected and it, the lesion is not in the brain the second thing is if a patient has got impaired taste sensation then that means it is element type of uh, peripheral lesion and not the central lesion in a brain lesion the taste is normal so these two points can help us now once we have uh, suspected you know facial paralysis <clears throat> how do we confirm the diagnosis 
So usually just like you know every other neurological disease, facial palsy also is a clinical diagnosis. When you see a person with weakened uh, facial muscles, it means it's a Bell's palsy. And but in some cases we may have to go for brain scanning if you think that the lesion could be in the brain. Uh, we may have to do it, and sometimes to demonstrate the inflammation of the facial nerve and the swelling of the nerve, MRI may be useful. And to assess the extent of involvement of the facial nerve, uh, we can go for facial nerve conductions or blink reflex. And also doing follow-up, it can be useful. Sometimes, you know, Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is post-infectious uh, polyradicular neuropathy, where in addition to facial weakness, there'll be weakness of both arms and legs. In such conditions, nerve conduction studies can be done to, you know, make out or confirm the diagnosis. And in selected cases, we may have to investigate for diabetes, Lyme's disease, and sarcoidosis, because these are other two, other conditions that can cause facial paralysis. Now, once we have confirmed the diagnosis, how do we treat? So, treatment of Bell's palsy is quite simple and straightforward. One is that we have to protect the eyes, because Patients can't close the eye on the affected side, so the dust and other things can get into the eyes, causing you know <clears throat> irritation and sometimes in secondary infection. So frequent eye drops, lubricants can be useful. And if a person has got you know totally weakened uh, orbicularis oculi muscles, then you know they can go for what is called partial tarsography, where the eyelids are sutured partly. And once the patient recovers, then it can be opened. But that is rarely required, not often. And uh, there are two drugs which are very useful in treating Bell's palsy. One is the steroids, because there is supposed to be inflammation in the facial nerve. So short course of oral steroids are sufficient in most cases. And obviously, if a patient is diabetic and we use steroids, sugars can go up. So under the guidance of physician, sugar control is important. And the second drug that is very useful is acyclovir, which is antiviral. And as I mentioned that you know the common cause is herpes simplex virus infection. So use of acyclovir can, you know, can be very useful. And we have to start these two drugs as early as possible. If we start these in the first week, recovery is much better rather than starting in second or third week of, after the Bell's palsy. Many patients complain of pain on the affected side. So uh, analgesics like you know, naproxen can be useful for those patients. And also there is a you know, very important role of physiotherapy where we have to do uh, facial exercises and also stimulation of the facial nerve, electrical stimulation. And exercises can include like, you know, whistling or trying to suck through a straw or taking a balloon and trying to blow it. And these can be done as many times as possible. So people who start physiotherapy in the first week, uh, they have, you know, good improvement and it can be continued for at least 10 to 14 days uh, for, you know, good benefits. So after treating, what is the outcome? So as I mentioned that Bell's palsy is a benign condition and most people do recover if we start steroids, acyclovir and physiotherapy in the first week of Bell's palsy. And over a you know, few weeks, up to few months, most people recover, up to 70 to 80% people recover well. But about 20 or 30% people may not recover completely and they may have mild residual facial palsy, especially when they smile or you know, eat food or talk, the asymmetry can be seen. And there are two other things which are not so common, but I want to mention here. One is called facial synkinesis uh, and the second is crocodile tears. So facial synkinesis means patient has some involuntary movement when they do some other voluntary movement, like when they try to you know, close the mouth, this eyelid may start blinking or when they speak, or when they try to look down. So one action, but some other muscles also act. And that is that can be uncomfortable in some patients, you know, especially when there is blinking of eyes frequently, it can affect you know, reading and driving can be affected. And that can be tackled well with Botox injections. And the second phenomenon is crocodile tears, where, you know, the white crocodile tears, because it is believed that crocodiles, after killing their prey, you know, they have tears. But in this, you know, patients try to do some other action, like while they're eating or smiling or talking, the, it leads to tearing. And that is due to aberrant nerve regeneration of the facial nerve. And here also Botox injection can be helpful. So I think, you know, uh, so today we have, you know, looked at one very common condition, and that is uh, Bell's palsy. And Bell's palsy, as I mentioned, it's a disease, you know, caused by a viral infection, and it is uh, very easy to treat. In most cases, uh, we don't have to conduct any tests, but in some cases, MRI could be useful to exclude a central cause of uh, facial paralysis. And with proper treatment with steroids, acyclovir, and physiotherapy, 
uh, one can have uh, good improvement and rapid improvement and most people do recover within a month of uh, getting wells policy i hope this video was useful for you and i'll be happy to answer your queries please do like subscribe comment and if you have any queries you can post in the comment section i'll be happy to answer